Welcome to this video about cluster heat maps. Note that I assume that you know the basics of hierarchical clustering, which I explained in the previous video. In this video, we'll see how a heat map is created, and how standardizing the columns or rows affects the heat map. A heat map is a graphical illustration of data where values are represented by colors. A cluster heat map is a heat map where the rows and columns of a data matrix have been ordered according to the output from clustering. Let's make a heat map of the following data, where five variables have been measured on five individuals. For example, we see that individual B is 170 centimeters tall and has a total cholesterol level of 215. We'll now make a heat map of this data where large values will get a red or orange color, whereas relatively small values will get a blue color. Based on the values, each cell in the matrix has now got a certain color. Since this cell has the lowest value in the dataset, it will get a dark blue color. And since these two cells have the highest values in the dataset, they have got a dark red color. We see that the two variables body height and total cholesterol level have a red or orange color since they have relatively high values. Whereas the diastolic blood pressure and body weight have blue colors because these two variables have relatively low values. From here on, we'll illustrate the heat map like this. We'll now create a cluster heat map where we order the rows and columns according to hierarchical clustering. We first begin by ordering the rows. This part of the heat map shows the dendrogram of the hierarchical clustering based on average linkage and the Euclidean distance. We see that the two variables diastolic blood pressure and body weight are put next to each other because the values of these two variables are relatively low whereas the body height and the total cholesterol level are put together because they have relatively high values. Remember from the lecture about hierarchical clustering that the ordering of these three rows is arbitrary in most software tools. We could have switched the position of these two rows, so that the systolic blood pressure and weight were put next to each other. Similarly, we could switch the order of these two rows so that the height is put next to the systolic blood pressure. To fully understand your heat map, you must therefore check how your software orders the leaves when generating the dendrogram. We will now also order the columns based on the dendrogram for clustering the individuals. Both the columns and the rows have been ordered based on the two dendrograms in the following heat map. For example, it is now easy to identify two persons with similar values of the five variables. We here see that the individuals A and C have about the same values. Since the colors for weight and height seem to be identical, we know that these two individuals have about the same weight and height. Individual C seems to have a bit higher blood pressure values in comparison to individual A. We can also add the actual values from our data matrix in heat map. It is now easy to identify the person with the lowest diastolic blood pressure and at the same time we see the actual value behind this color. However, it is more common that the values in the heat map represent standardized values, where the mean value is subtracted from all the relevant values and where the differences are divided by the standard deviation. The mean of all the values in this matrix is equal to about 136.92, and the standard deviation is equal to about 49.66. If we would standardize the values based on this mean and the standard deviation, the color and the clustering would not change, because the relative differences between the numbers have not been changed. The only thing that would change in this heat map is the numbers behind the colors. Note that, after we have standardized the values, the mean of all the values in this matrix is equal to 0 and the standard deviation is equal to 1. For example, 
This value tells us that the original value of 171 is 0 0.69 standard deviations greater than the mean of the original data, which is equal to 136.92. This standardized value has been calculated by subtracting the mean from 171 and then dividing this difference by the standard deviation. However, we could instead standardize each column separately. Note that this will change the dendrogram, as well as the order of the columns. The mean in this equation would then represent the mean of a certain column, and x sub i represents all the values in that column, and sd is the standard deviation of the values in the given column. If we standardize the values of the first column, we would get the following values. The five values for individual D are centered around zero and have a standard deviation of one. For example, the value of the diastolic blood pressure is about 1.15 standard deviations lower than the mean of all the five measurements on person D. However, it would probably make more sense to standardize the variables instead of the values within each individual. In other words, we should standardize based on the rows instead of the columns. Standardizing based on the rows instead of the columns would result in a heat map that is very different from our previous heat maps. The difference is mainly due to that the rows are now ordered in a different way. From the lecture about hierarchical clustering, we made the following profile plot, where we could see how the variables change across the five different individuals. We see that the systolic and diastolic blood pressure change in a similar way across the five individuals. This explains why these two variables now form a cluster when the variables have been standardized. We also see that the body weight and body height have a similar profile. The standardized values now make more sense because they now represent the relative differences among the five individuals. For example, Person C has a body weight that is 0.4 standard deviations greater than the mean weight of the five individuals. And person D has a diastolic blood pressure that is 1.43 standard deviations lower than the mean diastolic blood pressure of the five individuals. Finally, we learn how to interpret a heat map from a gene expression experiment. This heat map has been generated based on normalized RNA-seq data so that the total read count is similar between the 18 individuals. In addition, we have standardized the normalized values for each gene. The mean value of each row is therefore equal to 0 and the standard deviation is equal to 1. In this example, we have 9 individuals with a certain disease and nine healthy controls. Each column therefore shows the expression level of all the 50 genes for each of the 18 persons. The top 50 most significant genes between the two groups were included in the heat map. Since we selected the most significantly expressed genes, out of thousands of genes between the two groups, it is expected that the disease group forms a cluster that is distinct from the individuals in the healthy control group. The color shows the relative expression of each gene between the different individuals. A blue color means that a person for a given gene has a read count that is about one standard deviation lower than the mean count of that gene for all 18 individuals. And a red color means that the expression level is about two standard deviations greater than the mean count of a given gene. We see that these genes have a much lower expression in the disease group compared to the healthy controls. In contrast, these genes have a much higher expression in the disease group compared to the healthy control group. Out of the 50 most significant genes, there are a lot more genes that are upregulated in the disease group compared to the healthy control group. For example, we see that person number 4 in the disease group has a much higher expression of the gene LAT2 compared to the other individuals. 
we see that this person has a relatively high expression of these particular genes. So, what would happen if we instead standardize based on the columns instead of the rows? This heat map has been standardized based on the columns instead of the rows. By using this heat map, we can analyze the relative expression of the 50 genes for each person. Since this gene has a super high expression level relative to the other genes, it picks up most of the red color. This type of heat map can be used to compare the relative expression of genes, but it should not be used to compare the gene expression between people in the healthy control group and the ones in the disease group. In order to be able to simultaneously compare the genes, as well as the 18 individuals in the same heat map, we would need to use the original data or use global standardization as we did in the beginning of this video. The following heat map has been generated without any standardization. However, the problem with this type of heat map is that there is barely any difference in color between the disease group and the health controls for genes with a relatively low expression level. Only genes with a relatively high expression level will show a distinct pattern between the two groups. This is the reason why most heat maps of gene expression data are displayed with standardized values for each gene. This was the end of this lecture about heat maps. In the next lecture, we will have a look at k-means clustering. Thanks for watching.